Hello everybody and welcome to episode three of um, Getting to Know Philippe. Come on. Today I've got Damien from the podcast Lady Agonal, who's going to help me discuss his time in Monaco and go through it in a wee bit more detail. Enjoy. Hi Damien, how are you doing? All right? Hi, fine. You? Thanks for having me. No, thank you. Um, do you want to just tell the tell people where they can find you? Yeah. <laughs> we want to talk about uh, Philip. <laughs> we have a. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of uh, things to say about uh, his uh, Monaco's uh, adventure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, doc. Um, so, what is it you do yourself? Just to tell the listeners a wee bit about you. Uh, sorry, I don't... <laughs> sorry. Can you a uh, bit a bit slower, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it you do yourself? Um, just to tell the oh. listeners a wee bit more. About you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm a French journalist, um, so I work in the, for a French newspaper, and I have a, a website called La Diagonale, which is a, f- a website about Monaco's uh, club, and uh, we have also a podcast on uh, YouTube called Radio Diagonale. So uh, we uh, uh, we analyze every games and uh, uh, transfer markets and everything uh, about the club. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, right, let's get right into it. Um, what circumstances did Philippe come on walk into when he joined his Monaco manager? Yeah, um, he arrived on uh, January uh, 2021 um, because uh, the previous coach Niko Kovac was sacked uh, about um, bad results, mixed results, uh, but it was. Uh, not in the same dynamics as the previous year, so he arrived and uh, yeah, um, the change was a little bit criticized because uh, Kovac was very uh, liked by fans and uh, Philippe Clement was not, uh, uh, the the choice of Philippe Clement was not really uh, understood because uh, he won in Belgium, but he didn't have the charisma, the aura, uh, that uh, people wanted uh, or Kovac had, so um, he, he came to uh, to bring a new energy, a, a new dynamic to the club, um, and that's what he did in the first uh, half uh, of the the season. He he, he had in Monaco. What well, um, what kind of dynamic did he bring to the club when he first came in? Well. Um, it change. Uh, it brings some things. I mean, um, we can be a, a little bit uh, strict on his uh, final uh, uh, bilan, but is um, he, he brings something at the beginning because he saw that uh, on the f- uh, physically uh, field we were not very high, we were not very good. Uh, so he brings some things um, on the set pieces. Also, he brings a lot of things. So um, and I think. With uh, Niko Kovac, we saw some uh, tensions uh, appear, so he diffused more serenity to the club. He had um, a really uh, paternalistic uh, um, relationship with the players, so he was um, he, he calmed a little bit uh, the club. Um, when he arrived, he, he got some results in the first months, but really quick, we had some problems. Uh, we didn't have the results, and he was uh, really near to be sacked. Uh, three months after he arrived, and he won against uh, PSG three uh, 0 uh, But uh, we, I mean, PSG was a little bit like uh, in a, in French we say uh, with a, they came with a flip flap, uh, <laughs> so they came like tourists. Uh, but we we have a big win, and then we have a big uh, uh, unbeaten series with ten games and nine vic- consecutive victories. Uh, so he finished the season really well. We went in a knockout uh, Champions League. Uh, so yeah, he, he gained uh, his chance to have a, a second year. But he was really, really close to be sacked a uh, few months after he arrived. See, when, see, three months into the job, he takes yeah. the job at Monaco. Did you want him sacked? Do you wish he had been sacked at that time? Well, I mean, this was, um, he would have, it would have been logical 
for me uh, if he was um, if he was sacked because uh, it was quite soon, but the the dynamic was uh, was good on the first games, but then it really declined really quick. So um, I I don't think it was uh, illogical for me, but uh, he deserved to to have more chance also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, in terms of his um, his tactics and his, his his formations, what was his style of play at Monaco? Uh, very difficult. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have a, a very um, defined style. He, he, uh, his football is like transition football. Um, right. You know, as is is like mainstream uh, today football. Um, he has. Uh, he want to have a high intensity uh, pressing uh, on the defensive um, uh, uh, moments, but is um, on the attacking is he, he just play as transition. We didn't have a lot of possession. Uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, um, uh, chances by uh, with a most lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, key pass. I know so. It's very. Uh, it was quick on the front, and it worked, but uh, not very, uh, not very uh, based on position for me. Uh, and for Monaco, it's not in the DNA. Yeah, so it, it was also a problem. No, okay. Because Monaco has always a, um, um, a, 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 an attacking uh, style of football mm -hmm. in its history, and it was not very um, fitted with uh, what Monaco uh, expects and. You know, maybe Monaco, we are not uh, a lot in the stadium, maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah. but we are very demanding uh, also. So um, when you have uh, this style of football, which is very, I mean, very poor football for me, it was not fitted, uh, fitting uh, very well. Right, okay. Was there a particular form formation that he played? Um, he plays a lot with one striker. Um, <clears throat> he, as, as I said, um, Football construction, uh, football style was not very, uh, um, very elaborate, you know. Uh, so he was very, um, he was better with the um, four-two-three-one. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you say the same thing. Yeah. Um, he, 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 he needed really a three offensive uh, midfield uh, and one striker. Uh, this is one of the most. Uh, uh, formation uh, st uh, system style uh, he used. So uh, yeah, it was not. Um, he had difficulties to to make really uh, to be a protagonist on the on the on the game. And um, yeah, we last uh, uh, on the second year we had uh, Wissam Ben Yedder and uh, Brelem Bolo uh, as strikers, and people were complaining a lot because they were not playing. Uh, a lot uh, uh, together uh, yeah. at the front. So yeah, uh, he had a lot of criticism for that. Did he? Did he bring in any any players from the youth system? Did they give any youth players a chance? Yeah, um, we had um, Elias Ben Sigir, uh, which is maybe you 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 know a little bit better mm -hmm. now. But uh, yeah, he he, uh, he 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 did his debut on uh, December just after the World Cup. In 2022, in uh, uh, and he scored two goals uh, for this mm -hmm. first game in a professional. So yeah, that was um, <laughs> that, that was a, a very a, a big blast, and uh, he was a, um, he was on the on the on the starting eleven. Uh, I mean, I mean for uh, for the months they came after that. So yeah, he, he installed him. Uh, it, it gave his chance to another uh, young player uh, like uh, Edan Diop, which is uh, yeah. a, a little bit less uh, <laughs> good than, uh, <laughs> than Elias Ben Seguir. Um, and uh, maybe you know um, today uh, Marne Sakliouche, uh, which is playing currently playing with the um, uh, French uh, national team, uh, I mean, the. Um, you, uh, yeah. um, the youth, um, it, which it, it was with the Olympics game uh, in Paris, uh, with uh, and, he, and he won the the silver medal. Uh, so he did a great, great season last year. But he had some difficulties with him. He didn't get integrated a lot. There was also there were also a contract situation and little problem with with him. But yeah, he didn't get 
get a chance really. So some players had the chance, some of them didn't. Was, was he able to, at Rangers, we need to be able to have a transfer trading model where we bring players in for low fee, sell for high prices. Did Philippe come on, develop, make any players better that, that could be sold on? Um, well, in Monaco, we, we basically had the, the same tra- strategy uh, about the uh, transfer market. I mean, we had uh, some young players and we want to develop them to, to have uh, after big sales and this yeah. is important on the business uh, model we had we have um yeah it makes some players um developed yeah um i i think um Aurelien Tramini has a good uh, end of season with him and so he left for 100 million to um to real madrid uh but you know it's also it's Aurelien Tramini, the player was known from Madrid for a long time, so we knew uh, they were going to be to, to do an offer for him, an important for him. So um, maybe it's not the, the best example, but um, despite of uh, of that, I think he developed some players. He helped some players. Uh, I think about um, uh, Alexander Golovin uh, was okay. a lot uh, injured, a lot, a lot uh, before he arrived, and. He did a great, great job with him uh, on, in terms of physicality, um, right. and uh, yeah, now Golovin can play uh, a lot of games in the season uh, and can uh, he have a, a lot of games. Uh, he can play a lot of games, really. So yeah, he did a great job on that. It didn't. Uh, we didn't saw that in the transfer market because he's still in the club. But yeah, he he can develop some players and young players. Yeah. Um, see, I want to get back to something he says at the beginning of the interview about he was very good with set pieces. Monaco, his Monaco team were good with set pieces. I think I could. I think he's scored about three goals from corners since he's took over as Rangers manager. As but well, what were different about Monaco's corners and free kicks when Philippe Camont came in? Well, uh, you said he didn't score a lot with uh, in set pieces. That's. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, but maybe because of the player's profile. Maybe, I don't know if you have the, the players uh, for that, but uh, I remember in the press conference, he said that um, he had great players, uh, head players um, in the team, and he mm-hmm. didn't understand why um, we were not better in the in the, in the the box, uh, in the, the opponent box. Uh, so he worked a lot of that. I, I don't know what, why is it's not working uh, on Rangers about that? But yeah, we, with um, with Monaco, I, I think before he arrived uh, on the season with Kovac, we didn't score one uh, goal with uh, set pieces, and then he arrived, uh, we are, we get a lot more. So it was about uh, um, shooting in the right zone, and then have the player in the good zone to to yeah, score. Okay. He, I mean, he explained like this uh, why why it works uh, with him on yeah. this. Uh... Yeah. Um, so his, his first season is relatively okay. Obviously, he gets you into the knockout stages of the Champions League. I think he finished second in Liga, Liga 1, didn't he? Third. Third, right. Yeah, right. yeah third. We, we we lost to second place at the last, uh, last game. Right, okay. Okay. So... How's the feeling going in to come on second first his first full season in charge? Uh, the first full season um, he had, uh, well, he was sacked <laughs> after yeah. this full season. So, it's, well, it, it was not very good, and uh, it starts very bad because we were um, we were um, uh, beaten by uh, PSV Eindhoven on the knockout uh, Champions League. Yes, and it was hard for the players. Uh, I knew that uh, players were very, very um, affected by this, uh, this, uh, uh, this defeat. Uh, and the beginning of the season was not very bad, very good. Um, it, the middle was a little bit better, but also with uh, mixed results. Sometimes a good, good series, but not very, co- in a, not in a convincing way. Um, and at the end, we were beaten by uh, Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League uh, knockouts, um, and this uh, uh, this was this defeat was um, the 
the end of everything because after that the the player was uh, not uh, on the not here i mean uh, they uh, completely uh, let down the the things and we we had a terrible end of the season with uh, like uh, six defeats uh, in the seven games and uh, we yes we finished uh, six mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the season yes we had uh, five defeats one uh, one draw and one victory on the last seven games of the league uh players were not here uh so it's not only his fault, of course. Yeah. Um, I want to insist on that because um, a lot of people, a lot of fans, I can understand fans of that on this way, but they are a lot of uh, Philippe Clement, uh, uh, very, uh, very hard on him, you know? And I can understand that, but he was not the only responsible of that. Was he able to create a, a good environment for the players to work in? when he was Monaco manager? I believe, yes. Yeah. I believe he, he, he did. Um, as I said, when uh, uh, Niko Kovac was uh, sacked, mm -hmm. uh, he brings some calm around the club. Um, but at the end, it didn't... Uh, <laughs> the, the environment was were, were a little bit toxic. Not only of the because of him, but because of the fans, because of the pressure around. Uh, it feels like uh, we need a change. Uh, and I, I remember we criticized him a lot about um, a, a player, uh, Crepin Diata, which is a, a player he, he, get, he, he, he had on um, Club Bruges when he was in Belgium. Uh, he, he had like a, a father-son relationship with him. And we heard uh, at the end of the season, he had a fight with him at the training. So <laughs> but I think the, this can say a lot about uh, what happened and why it didn't work at the end. See how you said you don't think um, when Clement was sacked, it was everything was his fault about how... Because the reason I'm asking, when he, when he took over at Rangers, the Monaco fans were on Rangers Twitter saying... <laughs> <laughs> he was a bad manager, don't do it, all this kind of things. Do you Good think, luck. Yeah, do, you, <laughs> do you think those comments are fair? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was very tough at the end with him, yeah. Um, as I, as I said, we uh he, he had some difficult uh we had some difficult games uh, yeah. sometimes you win and you feel like you didn't win because uh, the the way we won was awful really poor uh, yeah. Yeah. i don't like that personally i don't like that um when I you can see relate. i can relate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and when we uh um, when we had the first game with uh, Adi Uter, our current uh, coach I mean, it was mm -hmm. it was like Brazil, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the first game were good, but it was like Brazil because of the comparison of the of Philippe Clement. But um, I'm, it, it would be it would be, um, it's a little bit unfair because I don't think he's a bad coach. Um, he's, a, he's he's not a bad coach because he won. He won we won titles in Belgium. Uh, I, I I know he won a, a cup with Rangers uh, also mm -hmm. uh, last year. So he's a he's a coach who can win. So he know how to win. Um, he's uh, he has he knows he has a method. He has an organization. He's a structure. Um, it's not very. It's boring, but it is uh, it is uh, it is structured. Um, but in the end, um, I think a lot. I think about pleasure you can have when you watch a game. And with Philippe Clement, we didn't have a, a lot of pleasure most of the time we we didn't have a lot of pleasure so if we think about this yeah good luck and <laughs> um, just a last question then damien what what's the kind of the overall feeling from monaco and the monaco support about philippe Clement's time in charge well um it's uh it's not a good feeling uh to be honest uh, everyone I mean, ninety percent of the fans, maybe more, wanted him to be sacked. Uh, I, I, I even, I can't even say that some fans wanted the team lose at the end of the season to sack him. <laughs> so yeah, that, um, 
but I don't, um, as I said before, he brings some good things also to the club. Uh, he did. But uh, yeah, the, the global impression was not very good. And para, uh, it's a paradox because if we look at the, the stats, the statistics, mm -hmm. he's one of the, the coach who had the, the best uh, percent of uh, victory, of wins um, in Monaco's history as coach. So it, it's not that bad. But he had a, a dominant team who can do better and well he did not he failed on the on the on the targets we the club uh, had all right okay okay um right oh i think that's everything oh one one last thing did uh, did monaco not give come on a new contract at the end of his first season am i wrong there uh, yeah, he had a contract. Uh, no, no, he, he was. Um, I, I don't remember if he, he had a three years contract right. when he arrived, or th two and a half, uh, because he was at the at the uh, in the middle of the season. Right. Okay. Okay. I just I, I thought I'd read somewhere that he'd, he'd been given another con another contract by Monaco while he was there while he was in charge, but I probably misread it somewhere. Um, I think uh, there were uh, rumors about um, a new contract uh, after, um, um, but no. I, uh, if I remember well, he didn't have another contract. He just uh, he just signed, and then he, he was uh, he was sacked one year before the end, uh, in, before the term of his uh, initial contract. All right, hey, well, uh, Damien, thank you for coming on. That was very insightful. Thank you. No problem. Right, cheers guys.